Okay, Stuart, let's see if we can find a nice place to film an intro. These mountains look pretty cool, don't they? I think this looks pretty great. This gorgeous, pretty dramatic. Let's get to the end of this and get started. Hey folks, Stuart and Alina here. It does actually look quite nice, but I think we can make it look a bit more interesting. Let's get some mountains behind us. And now, what about making this scene even bigger? And what if we had a really nice lake down here? I think that's a bit better. Right, Alina, let's get back to the studio so we can see how this trick works. Oh, my word. A lick of paint? Oh, I don't know. This video is sponsored by CapCut. We're going to use their free desktop video application to implement this technique. That should help us pay to fix this place up. Let's look at the first example so you can see how the trick works. If we get rid of the computer generated overlay, the matte painting that we're going to create in Photoshop shortly, you can see the original shot is quite bland. The trick here is being able to seamlessly create these matte paintings and then simply overlay them onto your original footage. There's the matte painting on the right. We now overlay that on top of the original video footage. Bingo, combination of the two. Look at the before and after. I mean, <laughs> this is mind blowing stuff. It's worth pointing out that this is an old technique as you can see from these glorious Hollywood examples from yesteryear where they actually painted backgrounds onto glass slides and then incorporated that still image with the underlying video footage. The reason we're talking about it today is because Photoshop's generative fill capability allows us to create our own digital matte paintings with no skill whatsoever. One click of a button basically and then we can overlay those onto our own video footage. There's a few tricks to get the best results though, so let's get into a live example right now. Here we are inside CapCut with four suitable clips loaded into the timeline. In this instance, we don't want any camera motion because then we have to do some motion tracking to link the matte painting to the underlying video footage. Maybe that's for another day, but what we do want is motion in the shot. So we're using me or the car to create an interesting piece of action, if you like, around which we will wrap our matte paintings. You can try the stabilize function if there's still some jitter in your shots, but in this instance, we don't need to do that. Now is the time to color correct our shots, so Photoshop has a nice baseline with which to create the generative fill. In CapCut, we can use the auto adjust function for a one click color correction. If we do the second example with the scopes on, you can see that when we tap the auto adjust button, it gives us a more balanced exposure to work with. Next up, we need to export the still frames from which our matte paintings will be created in Photoshop. So, up here, export still frame. Here we are inside Photoshop with one I prepared earlier, new, create a canvas with 4K resolution, and then you can simply drag and drop one of your still frames onto that canvas, and we're ready to go. Right, finally, we're getting to the bit that is going to blow your mind. Go up to the rectangular marquee tool, select the part of the image that you want to alter. A generative fill dialog box will pop up into which you can type snow capped mountains, Scotland. Give it a little bit of time to generate. I've speeded this all up and up comes something pretty mind blowing. We get three options. In this instance, I think this Third option is probably the best. It's, it's amazing. It's really up to your creativity now and some trial and error to see what kind of additions work for your scene. Here we're going for some medieval castle ruins. Yep, that looks really, really cool. Uh, this one, not so much. This one I also like. Let's go with the third option. Let's switch off the background so we can see our matte painting. That is what we've created. That is all artificially generated and we're going to export that as our matte painting, a PNG with a transparent layer so we can then drag that onto the original video footage in our video editing software. Back inside CapCut, go up to import, grab the PNG matte painting we just created, pull it down on top of the underlying video clip, resize accordingly, and bingo, look at that snow-capped Scottish mountains in the background. Let's transform this into something absolutely epic. Make the selection, type in craggy, rocky cliff mountain face, Scotland hit generate, look at that! <laughs> so good. Let's cycle through the options we were given. That is amazing as well. And that is fantastic as well. There is the matte painting. 
Same again with this shot, folks, although I've got another trick to show you in a second. No big deal, we'll just chuck in some absolutely incredible mountain scenery here. And now I think we will expand the frame. So we've picked the first option. Zoom out on this to give a little bit more space for your canvas. Hit C for the crop tool, expand the frame. Now you don't even need to type anything into the dialog box. Just hit generate and boom, new massive frame. We'll cycle through the options. Option two looks amazing. Option three, oh my word. Switch off the background and pretty much the entire image was artificially generated. Back inside CapCut with all our matte paintings imported and there's a little pitfall you need to be aware of. Do not create new pixels in the area where you are going to be moving. You'll chop your head off. As for the matte painting you created with Generative Expand, you're going to have to make some position and scale adjustments to blend the matte painting with the underlying video footage, but it's all pretty straightforward. Let's tie everything together with some color grading and some effects. Now, CapCut is really quite powerful. Here I've dragged an adjustment layer down on top of the matte painting and the underlying footage so I can hit both clips at once with the color corrections and grades that I'm making here. With that done, we can drag a color preset down or filter as it's called here. And again, we'll do it as an adjustment layer type approach because we've balanced the colors of all the clips, which means we can do this one size fits all approach to color grading. It's very time saving. Now, video footage has grain or digital noise in it. Still images do not. So up in the effects panel, let's search for noise and we'll drag a layer down again across all four clips. Don't want to set it too high, but that's gonna create a little bit of grain, which is going to help blend the still image of the matte painting with the underlying video footage. With another adjustment layer added, let's add a vignette. This darkens the periphery of the frame, adds a little bit of center focus to all the images. And again, I think it just helps tie everything together. Back up in effects, let's look for the letterbox film strip or movie as it's called here. That's cool, we'll drag that down. Again, using the adjustment layer technique, drag it across all the clips, job done. Digital camera moves can really help sell this effect. So select the matte painting and the underlying video clip, right click, create a compound clip. Then we can use the position and scale tools with some keyframing to move that frame. Nice digital tilt down. Let's add some music and sound effects to proceedings. We've got a little bit here inside CapCut, but if you can't find everything you're looking for, definitely go over to Epidemic Sound. That's where we get all our music and sound effects. Straight away, I was able to find a whole bunch of Scottish music and some footsteps on gravel. Export, and let's check out the end results. <laughs> 